Hey everybody, welcome back. So it's not even the end of the year yet, and we've already got our first US ARC alert out. This is for Louisiana, and it looks pretty sizable. It could be pretty impactful. So we want to get out ahead of this. I'm going to go over a little bit about US ARC for those of you that aren't familiar, and then we're going to dig right into what this is, what this says for Louisiana down there, and what we're going to be doing about it kind of some timelines, things like that, so you won't want to go anywhere. we got some important stuff to talk about today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Okay, so we're going to dig right into this stuff, but first, if you guys are finding these updates useful, if you're finding the educational stuff that we do here at Intrepid Exotics useful, by all means, get down, click the subscribe button. Always helps, always helps spread this stuff out to more people, especially when it's important, like what we've got going on right here. So let's dive into the US ARC homepage. For those of you guys that don't know, US ARC the United States Association of Reptile Keepers is an organization that watchdogs pretty much all animal legislation uh, before it hits the floor, before it gets passed, uh, so that we can make sure that we're not getting a lot of unreasonable, unfair, special interest regulations and restrictions put on the animals that we keep. Uh, really important organization. It's not terrible at all. You can go in here to their membership tab. I mean, numbers really do matter with this stuff when, you know, Phil Goss, the president of US ARC, is going up to the state legislators and he's trying to express his point and show the interest in some of this stuff. The number of people in the organization definitely does matter and it's not that much. Supporting memberships, 20 a year, bronze, 40 a year. You can increase 250 or 1,000 a year, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you can do. By all means, get on and do something. Just add yourself to the numbers of the organization. It does a lot of good. Plus, you know, getting the newsletters and things like that will also help you stay in the loop so that we can all be proactive when this stuff comes out. As you can see, their homepage is set up so that the most pertinent information is always up top here. This is the most recent that we're working with in their December 23rd newsletter. And you can see, if you click the read more here, this gives you a synopsis of the documentation that we're talking about. It gives you the deadline for the comments up here, which is March 6th, 2024. And it gives you the email address where we can send those comments to, where we can mail them to um, the person who's going to be responsible for receiving all of those. Now, this is all really important stuff because those letters and that communication, those emails and so forth, um, are what they're going to be using to kind of hear the other side of this argument when it comes time to start deciding what parts of this legislation they leave in, which parts of it they take out. Uh, we're not always 100% effective, but if you have a lot of people responding to this, they actually do pay attention to it. So um, moving on from that, you can see they typically include a link like they've got here to the entire reg as it's, um, as it's been proposed. So, but US ARC does a really good job of adding a synopsis here of whatever that legislation is going to be. Here you can see some of the changes that they're talking about. Um, I'm not going to read it word for word. I really encourage everybody to just sit down. Um, I'll have links to all of this stuff in the video description so you can go in and you can read it for yourself. My main goal here is to just bring your attention to this, have you read it, have you familiarize yourself with it, and then as the weeks progress here, we're going to be putting out more information as we learn more about this and as we have more communications with Louisiana on this to determine um, what feedback we really need to be giving these folks on this stuff. Um, you know, a big thing is um, I guess they've got some regulations right now of constrictors over 12 feet. They're looking at reducing that to any snake that would get over eight feet. They've added a lot to the restricted list. Um, the prohibited list has grown. Their licensing and permitting has changed um, a lot of it based on these different species. Now, 
And what it looks like after having read through this is it's not necessarily all on its face unfair because the way this reads is you can get a permit for just about anything on here. Um, that means that a lot of this, this whole process would end up hinging on how good the state is and how fair they are about issuing permits and about, you know, inspections and disciplinary stuff for mistakes and stuff like that. I mean, we've all seen how down in Florida, having a permit for stuff doesn't save you in many cases. Um, you know, Chris Coffey, all of his stuff was permitted to state really, um, really hemmed him up and put him in a position where he didn't have any other options. And that's, that's a situation that we really want to avoid with any state that's putting out a heavily permitted um, you know, proposal like this. Now, like I said, guys, I don't want to go through and read through all of this stuff word for word. It's just going to make this video incredibly long. But like I said, I've got the link down here in the video description. Get down, check it out. It's really important. If you don't have your U.S. ARC membership already, make sure you're getting that. It's not a lot, and it helps immensely. Um, a lot of cases, man, U.S. ARC has been the reason why a lot of us still have the animals that we do um, because of the work that they do with with reptile and exotics legislation and stuff like that really important stuff um, but you can see as it's you know it's listing out the prohibited species it's also got a list of of i guess all known species in louisiana as they talk about domestic or not domestic um, but you know the local wildlife out there as it pertains to collection and, and keeping and stuff like that so typically what happens is, you know, once we get a really good handle on everything that's going on in the situation, a lot of times U.S. ARC will put out like a form letter that folks can just copy and paste and send out. Um, comments are open right now. So once you read this and you understand it, you can go ahead and send the emails out to Fish and Wildlife down in Louisiana. Just always remember, keep it polite, keep it professional. The quickest way for us to um, lose credibility is to start going off the handle, start going off the deep end, start getting personally insulting and things like that. When we talk about this stuff, let's remember that, you know, the people down there, they're doing a job, they're treating us professionally, and we need to return the favor and be professional to them in return. Um, this is a negotiation, and in order to have negotiations go really well, You've got to try and maintain some kind of rapport. So the long and short of it is don't be rude. Don't be threatening. Don't make an ass of yourself. And understand that you're representing the entire reptile community when you communicate with these folks. Because when they think reptile keepers, they're going to think of your email. So let's keep all that stuff on point as much as we can. Now, I'm not always one to rehash old events and things like that. But since we're talking about state laws and we're talking about some pretty heavy permitting requirements and things like that, um, I think a good reminder of that is what we dealt with down in Florida. Um, that whole situation, it has evolved in a positive direction since then, but we can't forget what it was like when all of this stuff was happening in real time and, you know, the fish and wildlife down there was slaughtering a collection for no reason whatsoever. Um, you know, they may have had their means of justifying it, but there was no reason. There was no legit reason that all those animals had to die. Um, and we all know it. And they knew it too, because like I said, some things have changed since then. But um, I'm going to link that video in the end for when that first happened, my first reaction to it. Just to keep that kind of stuff fresh in our mind, to realize that stuff like this with another state is really important. We need to be paying attention to what's going on with it, and we need to stay on top of it. We need to make sure that we're communicating and communicating properly with these guys in order to protect our rights to keep these animals and to protect the lives of the animals that are already in captivity that we've already got people responsible for. So feel free to go check this out if you like. And we will see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.